Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, I caught some kind of uh, chest cold or something. So uh, I'm a shade under the weather. Let's just put it that way. Or I'm feeling puny. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, uh, got another little batch of meatloaf for you. Got a bunch of really good comments on the on the last one about the uh, uh, the handle designs for the come along. So we're going to explore that a little bit, and now we're going to do a little bit of testing. Okay, so buckle up. Could get exciting. Um, got a tool to show from a friend of mine. Um, we had a, um, uh, a little uh, meet and greet get together. Uh, I like to call them the NorCal Chip Breakers. Uh, we don't really have an official name, but it's a bunch of machinist types and metalheads uh, that kind of get together and... Uh, we do a little swap meet at somebody's shop and um, just kind of hang out and uh, kick the tires and uh, spend some quality time. So saw some little friends there and um, uh, pretty good. So it was, it was a good time. And uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's get on to it and um, and um, do some destruction. What do you say? Okay, so here's the, here's the two uh, repair options that I kind of proposed, or that I, that I thought of actually, uh, well, after I broke my come along. And uh, this one uh, mounts to the, um, <clears throat> in the same place that the, the stock handle mounts to, and then this one mounts in a slightly different place. So here's the, um, the actual pieces here uh, in living color. And uh, now I apologize. I didn't film the machining of these and the and the fabrication work because it's been raining here all morning, and uh, my uh, metal building is like a drum a drum head being beat on by Danny Carey. So uh, you can't really hear anything uh, uh, while you're working in here. So anyway, I just did the work, um, but the rain stopped thankfully, and so I can do a little filming. And uh, we can do a little testing of these two uh, these two handle ideas here. Okay, and, so, and for the folks that are just coming in uh, to this uh, uh, repair project, uh, Mr. Bozo struck, and uh, I broke my come along uh, handle socket. And uh, so the idea here with these these two uh, methodologies is um, the first one here would be to chop this off, get back flush to the, uh, um, this yoke, and then mount this uh, on the yoke like that, okay? And, uh, and then the handle inserts in here and Bob's your uncle, right? Off you go. The second option is this guy here, and I got a little bit more meat to work with up here, and that would be to uh, basically just plug this on here like so, okay? And, um, and this has, well, it's, it, it has this kind of a, uh, at least mentally, it has an advantage because it puts it on the center line of the load line, right? Um, and, but somebody correctly mentioned this, hey, once you get the thing loaded up, you know, this moment between the center line and here, when you're pulling on that, it's kind of irrelevant. And it's, it's true. Um, but there has been times I've wanted to be on the center, and there has been times that off to the side has given me a headache too. So um, now the other advantage of this is the handle is omnidirectional. Is that the right uh, terminology? Uh, what that means is the handle can come in this way or it can come in this way. So so you could technically operate it from below. So, uh, so that's one advantage to that, right? So anyway, that's, that's what we're doing. And um, you know, this is my, uh, <laughs> It's pretty beat up now, but uh, this thing has served me well uh, over the years. So, and then here's some of the the business here that uh, is kind of in the way uh, to do some of the wraparound scenarios that uh, a couple of folks proposed there. So, uh, uh, you know, not impossible, but uh, these are certainly very simple solutions, and I'm a pretty simple guy. So. Uh, Uh, 
just to give you an idea. So here's, <clears throat> here's the, uh, the elements of the test setup. So I made this uh, uh, bracket out of aluminum. <clears throat> and the reason I did that, excuse me, is to simulate uh, the fasteners that are going to hold these handle uh, adapters in. Uh, I wanted them to be threading into aluminum because I know a lot of people, uh, they worry about this, and, and rightly so. When you have fasteners going into a softer material, um, there's usually, some, or there can be some concern, right? Okay. Um, but if it's designed properly and um, uh, you're using um, the, the right amount of thread engagement and things like that, um, they're pretty secure in softer materials. There's, there's books and charts on all of this stuff, okay? So uh, uh, I recommend that you, uh, in, I mean, fasteners in themselves are uh, basically a career if you wanted, if you wanted it to be. But anyway, uh, it, for purposes of uh, quote unquote making the test, a reasonable analog um, to repairing the come along, I made the, the mounting bracket out of aluminum. Okay, so what's going to happen? We'll attach this here, and then this one will attach here, and uh, then we're going we're gonna to put some leverage on these, uh, on these mounts and kind of observe what happens, okay, or, or doesn't happen, okay. Um, and, then, uh, and then, you know, so here's the thread engagement for this. <coughs> You know, it's about the same thickness as the handle on the come along, and same here. Uh, this is, yeah, this might be a little long, but uh, uh, but that's what I had. So, uh, and I hate shortening fasteners. That's one of my pet peeves. So, uh, so anyway, let me. Uh, I'll put this. Well, I'll, you know what? I'm going to put it together on camera uh, just for the entertainment value. Okay, so let me uh, let me get going here. Uh, let's see, I think. So I got some threaded holes from an old vise that was uh, mounted here before. Um, okay. All right. So oh, let's put this one on. Strip the driver because uh, if this survives, I want to I want to use it. <laughs> All right. I'll go ahead and uh, put this one on. And I just use these because they had a uh, they have a washer face here. Actually, these have little serrations on them, which uh, I'll, you know if this survives, I'll uh, I'll probably use that on the uh, on the actual pair. Um, because these kind of don't want to walk out after you snug them down. And I'll probably put a little bit of uh, thread locker on, uh, on them as well. Let's make sure. You know, I'm barely in the scene there. Okay, well, that's what I have to do. So those are those are firmly attached, right? So once again, it's in aluminum. Um, so what we're really testing is the <clears throat> is the fastener efficiency here, right? So we're taking we're taking the bracket out of the equation, right? So sure, you could argue that uh, the bracket may break. Okay, sure, you could argue. Well, it did break, right? And um, um, you know the bracket did break. So uh, um, but what we want to do in this case is test the fastener attachments to these points, right? Um, you know, should I have made that thinner? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. You know, and maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll cut this down and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens or whatever. But it, once again, you know, you, could, you can go nuts with this, right? Um, what I'm trying to illustrate is, uh, um, you know, sometimes things are... Uh, a lot stronger than you think they are. So uh, anyway, let's keep going.
So I got uh, my handle to everything here, and that fits that. Uh, you know, I kind of want the maximum length I can get here, and um, and then I got I got a dyno here, so we can keep track of uh, of how hard we're uh, we're pulling on that. Okay, and then. Um, what I got here is I got a piece of three-quarter inch pipe. Actually, this is a, a three-quarter inch uh, rigid conduit, and it happens to fit. Um, ouch! It's got a big burr in the end there. I'm gonna say that. Anyway, it fits that. It does not fit into here, unfortunately. So, uh, but it does fit into that. Um, so uh, we're gonna give a tug on that thing too. Okay. So, that's later. Okay. So let me. Uh, Get this uh, slackened up here, and then we'll put a little choker hitch in it here so that it, can, um, it doesn't slip on uh, the handle to everything. Okay. All right, and then uh, let me tension it up, or let me uh, take the slack out of it here. And then uh, I'll bring the camera down, and we can uh, we can watch from a, a more entertaining angle. <laughs> All right, so we got a dyno. Now this is a ten thousand pound dyno. Uh, I, I can't find my smaller one right now; it's still buried. But uh, each one of these little divisions is a hundred pounds. So that's a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds, three thousand pounds, etc. Right. Um, so one line is 100 pounds, 200, 300, etc. Now, let's think about this for a second before we get get carried away here. What's a what's a reasonable number, right? Okay, so as a as a designer, this is part of your job, right? Is to think about how this thing is going to get used, right, or abused. And um, so, what you know, what's kind of a reasonable number uh, that of uh, force, pound force, that we can put on that handle, right? So forget about the length of the handle for a second, okay? But, you know, what can you pick up, right? Can, uh, or how hard can you pull, right? So if you can do a pull up, you can lift your body weight, right? So for me, uh, that would be like 230 pounds, right? Okay. So to me, that's probably a reasonable starting number, right? Is somewhere around 230 pounds or 200 pounds or something like that, right? And um, is what's realistic to pull on some handle of some length, right? Now, obviously, if that handle is, uh, you know, 25 feet long, right? Okay, you're putting some significant force. But this is my handle to everything, right? So this is the one I kind of use for for all of this. The stock handles are actually much shorter than this, right? Um, so this, you know, I don't know, is it a more severe test or whatever? Yeah, probably, right? Um, and this one is even a little bit longer than the handle to everything, right? Um, but anyway, let's, let's, let's pull to 230 pounds, you know. I can't resolve uh, very well, you know, between um, increments here so uh, we'll just kind of go for some whole numbers here and see what we get um, and kind of see what happens okay so let's uh, let's go to town all right so that's about a hundred pounds right there and you know you can see there's some some curvature in the handle Okay, so that's 200, and you can see that handle is uh, is bowing pretty good at this point. Let's uh, give you a kind of a straight edge there, just to, for reference. Okay, so you know that would be me hanging on this handle, right? Uh, and clearly, it's. I don't know, it's looking pretty good from here. So let's uh now I don't wanna I don't wanna trash my handle here. Let me uh let's see if we can get three hundred. That would be uh that's, that's 250 or something like that. Okay, there we go. 
That, so this is good. We found the, kind of the upper limit. Let's go see what happened. Because that's always exciting when uh, you get, a, you get a, a result, right? Cool. I think one of the fasteners went. So this this uh, fastener sheared off and then it rotated, which uh, sort of makes sense. It's interesting how that sheared, though. Take a look at that. So the the line where it's shearing, you know, because this material is so thin, right, it happens to be probably at a pretty unfavorable spot there, right, uh, where there's very little cross-sectional area, right? So let me, uh, let's uh, take the bracket off, and then uh, we can look at the, uh, That one looks pretty good still. But there's, yeah, so that sheared off. But, okay, so th this is pretty, this is pretty interesting here, right? So this is uh, space shuttle O-rings here. <laughs> so you see that little black dot right there? Can you guys see that? And uh, let's put this here for, for help. So because of the depth of the socket, right you know there it's a blind socket right and uh just coincidentally the thickness of this particular stock here coincided with with that spot right so you know normally you would put these you know this is actually a little too thin even for this um, 82 degree head here right <clears throat> but uh so normally this would be in thicker material so that the full diameter of the um, of the fastener uh, would see that uh, that shear force there, right? So I don't know, just luck of the draw that it happened to be right on that line there. That's kind of interesting to me. And um, um, this one seems to be okay. There's a little bit of uh, bozoitis there, right? Where you know, I mean. With the countersink, basically it's paper thin right there, right? So, um, um, so there's a couple things that we can do uh, that are actually pretty easy, right? And and we have a, a, a pretty good read on um, uh, the kind of force uh, that uh, you know the failure force here, right? So, uh, so we we'll talk about that. But let's uh, let's test this one now, huh? What do you say? All right, so we're on the other mount now, and uh, let's give this one a go. And uh, so we made it pretty close to, it was 250, maybe getting close to 300 on the other one. Uh, so let's see what we got here. So there's, there's about two. And my handle's bowing pretty good there. Let's see, are you is that in frame? Oh, that's going out of frame there. All right, let's get with the beans. I don't want to, I kind of don't want to wreck my handle here. All right, there's very similar to where we were before. 250, 250 on the dyno. Do I dare go any further? No, like I said, I don't want to wreck my. I really like that handle. So uh, let's. Uh, all right, so we're you know we're 250 there. Yeah, you know what? What's this? I don't know. Is it yielding? 250. All right, let's let's back out there. Let's check my handle. Let's do that. Let's see if it's uh, surviving. Okay. Here to be bent. Hmm. Wonder how much that thing can take. You know, let's put the let's put this guy in here and uh, and see how that does. See how it goes. And uh, so this is three quarter inch pipe. Uh, it's a heavier wall thickness, I think. Um, yeah, it's a little heavier wall thickness than this. And the OD is bigger, so this is over an inch. This is an inch and a sixteenth or something like that, or an inch and fifty thousand something. And um, 
and that's one inch in thinner wall. Now it's made out of a better material. That's 4130 there. So, but let's uh, let's try that one. Still good. Nice handle. Okay, let's do that. Oh. Did I not tighten that up? Well, that's very interesting. No, I tightened that up. I tightened that up. Okay, hey, we got some something else happened here. Hmm. Hmm, okay, the plot thickens. I guess we got to do a little forensic work over here. I'm pretty sure I rattled those down, and um, God, I hope I did. All right, let's look at the fastener. Maybe we got a fastener problem here. So that's, uh, that's very interesting. I could, I'm pretty sure I, I, I rattled those down. Let's take these out carefully and see what uh, yeah we uh, we might have stretched these fasteners which is uh, uh, pretty cool Thing, uh, you know, those are those are definitely loose. I mean, even if I put them on finger tight, I would have put them on so they didn't rattle, probably. But I have to go back and look at the video footage because uh, I'm pretty sure I uh, I hit those with the impact. <clears throat> So I did a little, uh, I did a little forensic sleuthing here, on you know what happened uh, to these fasteners here, uh, why they got loose, and um, I've kind of made the determination. So there's nothing wrong with, uh, there's nothing visibly wrong with these uh, uh, grade five flange head uh, uh, cap screws here. So those are fine. So what appears to have happened is we started pulling the threads out of the aluminum is what happened. Uh, keep in mind, uh, we got a, a really high moment force here, right? Um, levering on this and the width of this versus the fastener. So the load is really high. So how I kind of uncovered that, it took me, it took me a minute, <laughs> is um, I took a, uh, uh, something that had a, you know, pretty pristine thread, rolled thread on it, uh, this nice cap screw here, um, and threaded it in. And I can feel, I can feel um, resistance as I thread it in, and the farther I go in, um, so what's happening is the, the, the pitch is changing or this thread is distorted. And then if I uh, um, check the, uh, the uh, the fasteners with a with a nut everything's fine they uh, they were going to run right up there's no hesitation or anything like that right so um, so I'm pretty sure now let me do this here so we go into the same depth here so these are sticking out the uh, about the same amount that the uh, So, less, about that depth right there, yeah, so that depth of thread, you know, it should just go in, you know, like cream cheese, but it starts getting a little funky right there, and the other thing is I can see a slight angle to this uh, in relation to the surface of the, of the plate. So. Pretty sure that's what's going on as we started to pull the threads out of the aluminum. And uh, it was enough movement, it was enough movement to uh, make this, make the, uh, yeah, and that one starts get right at the bottom, uh, starts getting a little wonky there. Um, 
Anyway, it was enough uh, distortion, enough pull out to make this plate loose. So, so, very interesting results on both of these, okay. Not impossible to fix or, uh, or deal with, but we have some, um, a lot better idea of where, where we are strength-wise, and we've done kind of an empirical test, right, to kind of resolve that, right? Sure, you can sit there and calculate your brains out and all that, right? and um uh and miss something but a practical test is uh is you know well it's fun <laughs> that's why i do them right they're fun and um so the question becomes now what right what do we do so i got some ideas uh this this um this i like this one i also like this one so i'm thinking I might want to put both of these on the uh, on the come along as options, so it has a little stump that I can grab onto with my hand, uh, or use a, a tube on or whatever, and I can uh, slip into a stock pocket or a stock like pocket, um, and uh, and off I go with that. So, but uh, I, this needs to get uh, redesigned or beefed up a little bit, and. Uh, and then this one, we either have to drill through and put nuts or um, maybe do something else, uh, replace these with uh, helicoils or something like that to give a little bit more uh, thread strength there. So um, got to think about that a little bit. Anyway, the testing was fun, and thanks for playing along. And uh, I'm going to noodle this a little bit more and, uh, and see what I want to do. So for those uh, the armchair engineering gang out there, if you want to run the numbers yourself and play around with this, here's kind of the setup with the lengths, right? So we're just shy of three feet uh, for the handle. And um, um, you saw the load. So we're about 250 pounds um, at 33 inches, uh, you know, uh, lever, okay? So if you want to run some uh, rough calculations and kind of figure out how much stress was on some of these things, uh, uh, might be kind of a fun exercise. So, uh, you know, we, we got close to 300 a couple of times, but we were kind of at the limit, so some things were uh, <laughs> relaxing uh, in a non-good uh, engineering way, <laughs> suboptimal engineering way, let's just call it that way. And... Uh, uh, but some folks might, uh, uh, I know my friend Dennis uh, likes this kind of stuff, so he might uh, grind some numbers, see what he comes up with. So to confirm what I uh, what I witnessed there, that um, my aluminum was uh, was yielding and I was losing my threads in the aluminum, <clears throat> what I did was I set this up a little differently. So I've drilled through now and nutted it on the other side and clamped it together this way. Um, so we're going to load it up again, about the same level. Excuse me, and um, see what. Uh, see what happens. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. This is just a double check and uh, um, you know kind of a verification and it's fun. <laughs> that's why I do this stuff because it's fun. Just that in. Kind of load it up manually there. Uh, yeah it's okay. You can kind of see everything there. Alright let's give it some uh, let's give it some beans here. See what we get. There's two. That's 250. That's about where we were before. And um, yeah, I'm going to go a little more. Okay, it's bouncing to three. Bouncing to three. All right, so that's kind of where we were before. So 
like it there, up a little bit. Right, let's see what's going on in there. Looks like my handle's okay. All right, let's go look at uh, let's go look at uh, Mr. Boltskis. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, there's nothing going on here. This is solid as a rock here. So the nuts are behaving themselves. So in a bolted connection like this, um, kind of the failure, or mm, I don't know if I want to use that word failure, but um, the way that the joint loads up is the the nut dilates basically. So uh, it kind of starts to yield and conforms to what's there and spreads that load out. And, and then ultimately fails through, uh, um, you know, the nut dies. So, in a connection like that. So, um, so that's another reason that you don't generally put, um, this is grade 5 here, uh, but you don't put, uh, say, grade 8 um, uh, cap screws with grade 8 nuts. That's generally a no-no uh, to do that kind of stuff. So unless it's been thoroughly engineered so okay so I think we found we're pretty confident we found what our problem was uh, our aluminum threads were uh, uh, were getting bozoed and pulled out um, this thing is plenty strong um, it's the connection to the uh, the yoke on the come along that we have to pay attention to so this next one I want to show you here um, comes from a friend of mine, and uh, his name is Aaron Walla, and um, yeah, there'll be a link to his Instagram page uh, in the description. So I've known Aaron for, I don't know, a few years now, actually, and uh, honestly, I can't say how we started to develop a friendship. Um, he, pro uh, he reached out to me and asked me some questions, and... Um, so Aaron's story is kind of interesting in that uh, um, Aaron is a uh, is former military, so he was uh, creeping and crawling in the mountains in uh, Afghanistan, and um, basically when that all ended and for him, he basically changed careers completely. So now. <laughs> You want to you want to try something hard. There's something hard. So you're really good at something, and then you just switch that off and you just change careers. And uh, that's kind of Aaron's story. So, uh, and he wanted to get into machine work and uh, and and in particular kind of precision work, uh, grinding and tool making and die making and stuff like that. And this particular thing here is a. Uh, it's a little hammer he made, and it was part of his his mold making. Uh, um, I guess it would be his apprenticeship or a mold making training class. And this was actually a uh, um, the the head and the handle uh, went into the mold, or excuse me, the head went into the mold, and then the handle was injection molded uh, with this in in the mold. So there's some features internal to here that kind of lock this plastic into this uh, into the head there. So um, you know, and you can see there's a ejector pin, and there's where the uh, one of the gates were. It looks like it only had a single gate here. Uh, uh, looking at the uh, looking at the pattern here, uh, right in that area there. So it's pla hot plastic <laughs> squirts out in there, and then twink, you know ejector pushes up I don't know if he had an ejector on this side or what but uh, um, but if you look on his Instagram he probably uh, <laughs> he probably shows this uh, uh, I just don't remember anyway Aaron thank you very much this is pretty awesome and pretty special uh, I know you you worked really hard uh, to get where you're where you're going and uh, he's got his own shop in his garage now and uh, and with surface grinding and uh, and he's he's all in okay so I'm super proud of you, bud, and uh, good job, 
and uh, you know, keep going, man. So anything I can help you with, just let me know, okay? All right. Anyway, Aaron Walla, check him out on Instagram. So this last uh, Saturday, Sunday today, uh, this last Saturday, um, <clears throat> I uh, drove down to the Bay Area and went to the, I guess this would be the third uh, kind of meet and greet of, uh, you know, I, I, I always wanted a name for this group, right? Uh, or this, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, idea, right? And, uh, and I thought NorCal Chip Breakers was a, was a good name, but uh, I don't know. We'll see if it sticks. But anyway, we're, we just call it a machinist uh, or metalworking uh, meet and greet. And this is where some folks get together and, uh, you know, they bring tools and books and, uh, and machinery and stuff like that. And we just, you know, hang out and uh, eat some donuts, drink coffee and uh, look at people's piles of tools and buy and sell and, uh, and trade and, uh, and do all that stuff and just uh, see old friends. Well, this is, uh, this is an old friend of mine, uh, Randy Richard. And if you haven't checked out Randy's uh, uh, YouTube channel, okay, uh, you should go show him some love. Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. And I'll put a link in the description. Go check him out. Throw him a sub if you like what he's doing. He gets into all kinds of stuff. He, him and his son do Toyota Tacoma things. He does woodworking. Uh, he's much more versatile than I am. So uh, uh, anyway, Randy's a cool cat. And uh, He's a he's a uh, was a uh, merchant marine sailor, and so he's got some like really great stories about sailing all over the world. And uh, I send him videos of uh, of ships in in rough weather, and he's like, "Meh, <laughs> that's nothing." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh boy, I can only imagine, right?" So uh, anyway, he gave me this little. Uh, uh, you know, it's a bopper, right? I call it a bopper. You got something in the in the mill, and you want to move it over. Or you're indicating something, you know, and you just want to tap on something. It's got two different surfaces. And just so you know, if you get one of these, it really bugs Randy that uh, that you unscrew the ends. And uh, uh, he's like, "Why does everybody do that?" And it's like, <laughs> "That's what else you're supposed to do with it, right?" So now this end's tight, so uh, I can't do that. But anyway, Randy gave me one of these, and uh, uh, thank you so much, Randy. I appreciate it. And uh, he does scribes and some other things too. But uh, Randy's a good friend, and uh, and uh, and uh, it was good to see him. I haven't seen him for a while. So uh, anyway, thanks, Randy. So this little hoist uh, is the one I was using to uh, to test that uh, that setup, and. You know, I don't, uh, I don't recall sharing this with you guys because I just don't recall it. I might have because I've had this for a while now. Um, so where I got turned on to these is we have a couple of these at work um, that uh, you know I saw a uh, one of the facility's plumbers. Uh, he was putting some you know I don't know rather large pipe up. It was for a high pressure air system that we were doing and. He had one of these, and uh, he was using it just basically to hold the pipe up while he kind of fitted the pieces together. And I said, holy cow, look at that, you know, that's a really nice little hoist, right? And uh, so I ended up getting a couple for our building. And um, so the, the cool part about this is it's compact size, okay? Not so much it's, uh, not so much it's capacity or anything, right? That isn't really the, uh, the amazing part of this, right? And that's not why you get something like this. Here's your headroom, right? There's your headroom, right? It's about a foot. Let me uh, let me grab a tape here. So I got a little bit left there. So I'm under a foot. Okay, let's uh, let's run that up. So at minimum. You know, I'm about 10 inches, okay? So that's that's fairly impressive. So this is um, 500 pound, five or 600 pound capacity, something like that. And uh, you know, they have a, so if you go looking for one of these, don't get tempted and get the 1200 pound one. The reason you have a hoist like this is for how small it is, right? And you know, if you got heavier weights to deal with or whatever, right? Then, you know, you do it a different way or whatever. But 
the, the usefulness of this particular tool is its compact size, right? Now, this one, uh, so I was good. So I, I got these ones for at work, right? But they were several hundred dollars. <clears throat> this one came from Northern Tool, and it was like 60 or it was like $70. And when you look at these, when you compare them to the, uh, the several hundred dollar ones, uh, they're made next door or across the street or in the same factory. Okay, let's just put it that way. All right. And um, so whoever's making these is just painting them different colors and uh, putting different stickers on them. Okay. Uh, so this is a good one to, uh, you know, I've used this to winch. Uh, pallet jacks into a trailer um, just to pull on something uh, to put a load on something you know while you while you tack it up you know there's all kinds of little uses for this um, it's small enough to fit under the seat in your truck or behind the seat in your truck and uh, and just give you a little bit of mechanical advantage um, and I don't know it's got yeah, I don't know it looks like that six feet of, of run and it comes in a little uh, a little pouch that it's it you have to practice uh, putting it back in the pouch to get the pouch to close but uh, you, you can get it back in there it's not too bad and, uh, so anyway uh, I wanted to share that with you this this one came from uh, um, uh, Northern Tool and uh, I'm pretty sure they still have them uh, I'll look them up and uh, put a link in the description for you guys uh, pretty handy tool if you're uh, uh, looking for a low headroom uh, um, force multiplier. I ordered the um, the insulation uh, hanger pins uh, the other day. Uh, I wanted to try do some uh, bonding tests with them to see uh, um, you know if they would uh, bond to a vertical or an overhead surface without having to clamp them. Uh, for example, so. Uh, most of you guys know that uh, I'm going to use some, uh, not this particular stuff, but I'm going to use uh, rigid insulation board to insulate my shop. Uh, one of the reasons is, uh, you know, you can cut it, you can fit it, um, and uh, you can retain it with a simple retaining system like this. And, um, uh, and it leaves a, a little air gap behind it, not much, a little air gap. Um, and then... Um, you know, you just push it on and then, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. You don't have to create a netting or a covering or whatever to, uh, if you don't want to. So anyway, uh, I was real pleased with this stuff. Um, you can see the Sharpie marks here. I, I put it vertical when I tested it and, um, and gooped it up and, uh, per the instructions and then, and then squished it on there and then marked it. And then I let it sit overnight and this stuff's pretty good. Now I didn't do any like major scuffing or cleaning. I just wiped it off with a little alcohol uh, on that spot. And this is what the pin looks like. You know, basically it's a uh, you know piece of sheet metal with a nail driven through it. Okay, and they come in a box of, of 100, and they're not super expensive, but uh, uh, they don't give them away either, right? I think it was 30 bucks for 100, something like that. Uh, that's what I want to say. This is the stuff that was expensive. This is $100 for a gallon, uh, although fortunately, uh, you don't need a lot um, per per anchor. And it's about the consistency of uh, uh, lithium grease is kind of how I would, uh, what was my first thought when I opened it, right? I thought it was going to be a lot stiffer, but uh, literally you could probably just dip it and, uh, you know, and if you had full coverage, uh, you'd be, you'd want... Uh, off and running. You want a little bit to come through the holes, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, enough enough yapping about that. I know you guys are dying to see this here. So this is uh, uh, high density uh, foam here, right? And the idea is, you know, you, sh you shove it on, and then uh, this has a direction, and you push that on. I'm done. Okay, and that's on there pretty good. Now I. I I did use this one already, and you can take them off, but uh, you have to kind of pull on them and rotate them, and then they'll kind of work their way off the nail if you have to reposition. So the plan would be to cut pieces, fit them, and uh, mark their outlines, you know, because there's going to be all kinds of different shapes and whatnot, and then decide how many pins per, per, pan, you know, per piece, 
you know, you're going to kind of need a minimum of two, right? Uh, you know, well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, depends how they're interlocked. And then uh, glue the pins up and then bink, 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 uh, put your pieces up. And I think it'll go pretty quick. And then this overall height, uh, you know, from the, from the base to the tip here, um, I don't think I need to cut these off. Um, you know, the, the nails are two and a half inches and uh, um, I have kind of a two by four two by four depth to work with, which is three and a half. So uh, should have plenty of room and I don't have to do anything because uh, th these will be covered. So uh, now the ones in the ceiling, uh, I I'm not planning on covering those. Anything over eight feet, I'm not planning on covering uh, uh, the insulation. It'll just have whatever facing it has on it. And um, so will I clip those off? I don't know, it's pretty unlikely. Uh, I'll hit my head on them, but you never know. <laughs> So anyway, those are the insulation pins and uh, the, the cement, and uh, it's, uh, I'm pretty excited. It works pretty good. All right, that's about all I got right now. Um, fun with fasteners, and uh, there'll be more on this as I, uh, as I uh, do some additional stuff. We'll probably uh, revisit this one a little bit with uh, a little modification and uh, give it a little test and see how that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, catch you next week. So I just want to give a quick shout out to another good friend of mine, uh, Gary Brown, um, Old Iron Machine Works. And uh, Gary's got a, he's out of Rio Vista, California. And um, he has, uh, um, Gary is a first rate mechanic. This guy has worked on everything. He does gearboxes with shafts like this and tractors and pumps and compressors and things uh, you know uh, you know they have 20 ton crankshafts and stuff like that anyway all kinds of neat stuff and uh, so he's got a really interesting channel and um, um, so go check him out and uh, there's a link in the description old iron machine works and show Gary a little bit of love watch a couple of his videos and uh, throw him a wisecrack in the comments and tell him I said to, said to, <laughs> said to do it so uh, anyway, Gary's a cool cat, and uh, he was at this little get-together, and uh, I haven't seen him for a while, and it's always good to see him and, uh, and all the other characters, too. So uh, anyway, catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.